What's up, Wall fans? Welcome to uh, another Monday edition of Common Sense Sundays with Go Tell to the Wall. Uh, this is episode 113, and I'm calling it the special Heat Wave edition. Uh, yeah, we just had some scheduling conflicts, so uh, we went ahead and, and took out some time to do this on Monday as opposed to Sunday. It was a very busy weekend uh, for many of us around Go Tell to the Wall, and uh, so that's why we find ourselves here on a Monday. Uh, so all that being said, we got a lot of stuff to get into, so let's get right into episode one thirteen. Who want to do go tell it to the wall? Tell it to the wall. Go tell it to the wall. Tell it to the wall. All right, wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers. Welcome to another very exciting Monday edition of Common Sense Sundays. This with Go Tell It to the Wall, hosted by me, your absolute favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. And this is episode 113. 113. Uh, now, we'll, we'll talk about some scheduling conflict stuff and the fact that I still don't have a complete voice. Uh, but before we do that, let's do some social plugs. Uh, you can keep up with us before episodes, after episodes, during episodes, whenever you so please. And you can do that in multiple locations. One of those would be Facebook.com slash Go Tell It To The Wall. That's right, Facebook.com slash Go Tell It To The Wall. Uh, you can also head on over to our YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash Go Tell It To The Wall or at Go Tell It To The Wall. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. You're going to find all kinds of great video content up there. In fact, uh, last week we threw up uh, some of the newer uh, album review videos that have been sitting in the hopper. So make sure if you haven't seen those yet and you're a YouTube user that you head on over and check those. And then, of course, you can follow uh, my own personal Instagram account, which is at SoCalSean, S-O-C-A-L-S-E-A-N, at SoCalSean. Uh, new photo content going up there uh, last week and a whole bunch more coming up uh, this week as well. We'll talk a little bit about that as we move through the episode. Uh, and then, of course... Make sure you bookmark. Do not forget our official website, which is SeanOrourkeLive.com. Uh, on there, you're going to find exclusive content that you won't find on any of those social platforms I just mentioned, uh, as well as a link to our Patreon campaign. If you want to get involved and support us financially, Patreon is a great way to do that. You can become a patron. Uh, and that link, like I said, is right there on SeanOrourkeLive.com. If you want to support us and you don't want to get involved with Patreon, uh, you can also support us by picking up some Common Sense merch through our merch web store. Uh, links directly, again, from SeanOrourkeLive.com. You'll see it right at the top. You bookmark that, you check back often, and then you're going to see those links I mentioned right at the top uh, and get access to some of that exclusive content that doesn't get posted anywhere else on the socials. All right. Uh, now that we've gotten that out of the way, this is, I think I said it at the top of the, the live uh, or the video feed uh, for this episode. I'm, I'm calling this the Heat Wave Edition. We're getting yet another heat wave here in Southern California. It's like 100 degrees outside right now. Well, I don't think it's quite 100 anymore. It's a little later in the day, but we're at about 100 degrees here in Los Angeles. Uh, and I do not do not live in anywhere near the hottest part of, of this area of Southern California. Uh, I had some friends posting uh, temperatures well into the triple digits, uh, especially if you head out to the valley or out to Palm Springs. It gets quite warm out there. Uh, so hopefully everybody's staying hydrated, staying cool. Uh, as we get through yet another heat wave. This is this happens every year, and everyone gets kind of shocked. We always get hit with another heat wave kind of end of October, end of August, uh, beginning of September, and, then, and sometimes we even get one in October uh, before we actually get into that Southern California, like autumn, cooler weather and everything else. Uh, and if you can't tell, I know last episode I talked about how my voice was gone, and I was gradually getting it back. Well, to be honest... It might be a little worse now than it was last episode, and I, I blame that squarely, squarely upon uh, the Venomous Pinks and Less Than Jake, and we'll talk about that when we get to some entertainment news and our show recaps. All right, uh, let's get into some digital trends, and actually, this first one's going to be a little bit of why we didn't act even record last, last Sunday, and that would be hashtag Hurricane. That's right. It's not actually a word. In fact, I did see a tweet from... The Webster's account that said this is a new one even for us. Uh, and what people did was uh, here in Southern California, really out in Mexico and then went up through Northern California. But the, the f crazy thing was, for, and, and I'm sure it was uh, at least somewhat national news. So you probably have had heard about this um, last Sunday, not yesterday, but last Sunday, uh, we had a tropical storm system move through. It was uh, the result of, of Hurricane Hillary. Uh, that came out of the Gulf and absolutely thrashed parts of Mexico. Uh, they had crazy flooding and everything. It hit them as a hurricane, 
uh, and it made its way to Southern California as a tropical storm was downgraded. And everybody was uh, kind of running around to prepare, I guess you could say. The news, uh, our mayor was, was out saying stuff. They had emergency personnel and, and public information officers giving us all kinds of tips on how to prepare. Uh, you know, we were expecting really high winds, uh, crazy amounts of rain uh, on, on that particular Sunday. Uh, so knowing that, uh, I chose base. I, I was, it wasn't so much of a scheduling conflict, more of a, I didn't want to go in the studio because I thought for certain, for certain, uh, there would be at least power outages and I'd be just dealing with that as I was trying to record an episode. Uh, but then of course, on top of all this weather that was coming through, uh, and, and it was wild cause we were, we got a couple of emergency notifications. If, you know, if you have a cell phone, like everyone does, unless you're too young for one, uh, we got those emergency notifications first about the tropical storm coming through. And then out of nowhere, we get another one about an earthquake nearby. Uh, I didn't feel a damn thing. I tend to, I've been in California the, the majority of my life. So I tend to not, uh, feel these things unless they're bigger earthquakes. And it wasn't that close to Los Angeles. It was actually in Ventura, uh, which is kind of Northwest of Los Angeles, uh, so then, of course, people ran with this this hurricane uh, hashtag, um, and and of course, that like I said was was one of the main reasons for no episode. Um, I wasn't really worried about flooding in my particular neighborhood. Uh, I live very urban, not far from from downtown, uh, so it's it's a lot of concrete. It's not not a lot of flooding of it, and I live uh, on a slope, so it, it takes a lot for us to get flooded. Uh, I was a little bit concerned about the winds. We took down our, our umbrella outside, not just like folded it down, but took it off the thing, laid it down uh, in my covered driveway. Uh, and then sure enough, we didn't end up getting a lot of the winds here in, Lo- in the Los Angeles area, which uh, I don't want to say I was disappointed because it was good to not. See- and, and there were a couple trees around the neighborhood that lost branches and stuff. But uh, selfishly for me, I was hoping that uh, some of the palm tree branches on my property uh, would come down, <laughs> save me the trouble of. Uh, hiring someone to climb the tree and get those actual palm fronds down. But it was so so light, the wind at least, uh, that we didn't lose that stuff. Now, of course, lots of rain. It rained all day. My kid was stir crazy. Uh, and, and we'll talk about certain aspects of that as we get through uh, the episode. But it was truly a wild day. Um, I know people that definitely felt the earthquake, especially those that were close, closer to it. Uh, and unfortunately, there were, there were other areas. We didn't get hit too, hit too bad. Uh, but there were uh, high desert areas and burn areas that did get hit really bad, and they did have to have some evacuations, uh, mainly because of the volume of rain that was coming through uh, due to a tropical storm <laughs> hit in Southern California. And I, I laugh, not because it's funny that people were flooded and stuff. It's just, hey, we, we still have climate change deniers. There, was never, there hadn't been a tropical storm warning for uh, Southern California since like 1930-something. Weird shit's going on with the weather, people, and there's got to be reasons behind it. So I, it, it blows my mind that people can still, uh, you know, deny climate change. It's it's really kind of wild. Uh, but that's what we were dealing with uh, last Sunday here in the Southern California area. Uh, now, of course, moving along here, one of the biggest things trending on the social platforms um, this past week, I believe it was Thursday, was a particular mugshot of the one and only Orange Menace, uh, Trump there with his... Uh, uh, the, his legal problems that he's having in Georgia. And so, of course, as soon as that mugshot became public, everybody was posting it, which this, w- this one always kind of gets me. It's like, why does everybody feel the need to post the mugshot? It's like, you know everyone else is doing it. And everyone, it's like, here's Trump's mug. And I was, I'm scrolling through uh, Twitter. I'm still not going to call it that other stupid thing. And it's just like, mugshot, 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 mugshot. Now, the one I did think was really funny is apparently... And, and I believe he po- actually posted this on Twitter because uh, because the orange one has mainly been using that other platform, uh, Truth Social, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, so actually came back to Twitter uh, and had had not doctored up, but had added some text to his own mugshot. And uh, one particular line of that was never surrender written underneath his mugshot. Um, and I'm, I'm always shocked that he doesn't have anyone remotely smarter than him around to say, uh, sir, you know this is a picture of you surrendering, right? That's literally what a fucking mugshot is. He surrendered to authorities in Georgia. They took his mugshot, and then he posted it and said, never surrender. Uh, but orange one, you did, in fact, surrender. That's how that's how that works. And he'll be going back into court, obviously. Uh, this is one of many uh, legal... I believe there's a total of four different cases, all of them with 
multiple accusations and everything else. So he's going to he's going to be a little busy uh, over the next few months to a year uh, on top of still thinking he can be a viable presidential candidate, which blows my mind still. All right. Hashtag COVID scam. Oh, God. Do you remember way back in 2020 when we shifted from go tell it to the wall to common sense Sundays with go tell it to the wall? Uh, Because we had to start utilizing Sunday instead of Thursday. And why was that? That was because of COVID. And in fact, we had built in an entire section to every episode for a long time there uh, about COVID updates. Well, people out there, obviously it has gotten much better. We have vaccinations. We we know what we're dealing with a little more now. Uh, But in fact, some people have decided to get this hashtag trending because Twitter is an absolute hellscape of misinformation. Uh, And the other really ironic thing about this, people posting this hashtag COVID scam, numbers are actually increasing right now. They aren't increasing at the rate that we saw over previous summers, uh, but we are we have seen increased positivity rates. And personally, I have seen it among friends on that. And luckily, I haven't gotten it. And there hasn't been friends that I've been around necessarily, but people I'm friends with posting on socials. I've seen qu- quite a few lately uh, that have had positive COVID tests. So again, this is no scam. There's no scam. They're complaining about how people were forced to wear masks and everything else. And can you imagine if if nobody at all wore masks, how many more people would have died? It's utterly ridiculous to me uh, that that we still put out this kind of misinformation. Always, always, always fact check. People are always going to try to spread misinformation. They're going to try to get stupid things like this to trend, which they succeeded in this particular case. Uh, and, 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 And I would I always say, oh, yeah, look it up if you're interested. Don't look this one up. It's a bunch of fucking idiots. Don't know what they're talking about. Don't listen to anyone unless they're a doctor or an expert. You don't need to listen to some chuds on Twitter who, who think COVID is actually a scam. Utterly ridiculous. All right, this one uh, seems like it trends almost every day, every week, uh, definitely every month, and that would be hashtag active shooter. Uh, since our last episode, we have had multiple, multiple occurrences, one of them occurring here in Southern California, uh, in Orange County, as a matter of fact. Uh, And then we had another one in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, over the weekend. And then literally today, as I was putting the the final stuff into this show, uh, we had an active shooter at University of North Carolina. And I believe it was University of North Carolina. I was so busy with handling like five jobs at once is a a challenge. Uh, But they did, there there was in fact an active shooter. Unfortunately, a professor was killed. Um, and, uh, I believe last I checked, they did in fact arrest, uh, the, the shooter, but like I said, almost daily again, we're seeing these kinds of things, active shooters, mass shootings. Uh, it's utterly ridiculous. And we're going to talk a little bit about it when, in just a minute when we get to uh, mental health. Another thing that was actually, I, it was trending either yesterday or today. I don't know when this started. Uh, and we're going to talk more about it when we get to entertainment news. So bear with me. Uh, but their uh, Burning Man was trending, which this time of year, it tends to trend. People are talking about it. There's articles that pop up everything else because we are uh, we are not only approaching it. We are we are actually in Burning Man time, which, again, I'm going to talk about in entertainment news. But the reason this is trending uh, on the digital platforms is there were protesters. Really, I could have dropped this anywhere. I could have dropped this in entertainment news talking about Burning Man. I could have dropped it in common sense. Uh, but there is a viral video that's going around if you want to check it out. Nobody gets hurt or anything from what I understand. Uh, but there were these protesters out there blocking the road. For those of you not familiar uh, with Burning Man, even before you get off of the pavement, it's basically a two, it's a two-lane road for miles and miles and miles and miles uh, as you approach uh, Black Rock City. Uh, you know, in, in the Black Rock Desert there. Uh, so these protesters decided to completely block the road with a trailer. Uh, and apparently they were protest. This this is what gets me. They were protesting Burning Man and specifically the use of single use plastics at Burning Man, as well as the use of private jets. Now, I'm going to separate these and unpack it for a sec. I can get behind you on the private jet thing. Burning Man, even in the the 10 years since I first attended Uh, let alone 30 years ago, uh, really has shifted uh, to to the point where you have a lot of CEOs and tech bros and all this stuff flying in. And there is an airport that they erect. And so, yes, I could understand the excess use of private planes. Uh, Now, on the other hand, there's also a a plane that goes from Reno 
into Black Rock City with multiple people on it, and that's not a bunch of rich assholes using their private jets. That's just regular burners that are trying to get to the burn. In fact, I have a friend uh, that is he did it last year, and he's doing it this year uh, because he, he couldn't go until Wednesday. So if he had started driving on Wednesday or Thursday, he's, he's, he's going to miss a whole bunch. So fly into Reno, and they, I get that. So if you want to protest a little bit of the rich assholes, because honestly, I'd like to protest the rich assholes that could... It's okay to be wealthy and go to Burning Man, but don't treat it like some kind of corporate retreat. It's not what it is. Uh, Now, on the other side of things, for those of you not familiar with Burning Man culture, uh, one of the biggest sayings about Burning Man is this little thing called bring your own cup. Everybody that goes out, and I'm sure there's exceptions. You know, I'm not going to say nobody's using uh, single-use plastic water bottles. But for the most part, the ethos of Burning Man is to cut down on that kind of waste. Bring your own cup. You you don't go to camps that are serving drinks. That's what happens. And I'm not I'm not going to get into all of the semantics of it. You can you're welcome to research it. Uh, But when you go to camps who are sharing drinks, like you may have uh, camps with a bar that are making mixed drinks, or there's even uh, camps that bring out like their own micro brews. They will not give you a cup. They won't. If you don't have your own cup on you, you don't get anything. That's just how it works. I can tell you all of the camps that I know of personally, none of them bring out a bunch of bottles of water. And in fact, what what most camps do and what what my particular camp does is we have the emergency water barrels that you would keep for like earthquakes and stuff, completely reusable. Once we get once the camp gets close to Burning Man, there's a place to stop and fill them with well water. And then that in turn fills like those giant Gatorade things that you see on the, like the sidelines at, at the football games or in the dugout at baseball games. And everyone's filling their water bottles from there. So I don't know where they're getting their information, but the protesting single-use plastics uh, seems utterly ridiculous. And uh, that's clearly not something that is going on out there. I, again, maybe there's a camper too that doesn't know any better, but it is literally one of the core principles of Burning Man is bring your own cup. I mean, trust me, most people are not using water bottles you bring a water bottle you bring a coffee cup and usually bring a mug that's how i roll i have a coffee cup uh, that i use in the morning like a coffee mug and it's a metal one i have a water bottle that i carry and then i have a very small mug that i tend to clip onto my belt uh, for those instances when i go to like uh you know a a camp that's going to have drinks that they're giving out and and that's what i use and that's what the majority of burners do all right, again, we're going to talk a little bit more about it because uh, we tend to do that uh, with, with Burning Man is uh, when it is that time, we talk about it when we get to entertainment news. All right, one more digital trend here I wanted to, and this one's fun, uh, hashtag the 80s called and they. And I saw this and I was like, oh, what can I? But I actually clicked on it and the, the first one that came up just perfectly encompassed uh, what was happening in the 80s and that was uh, hashtag the 80s called and they want to apologize for all the hairspray and killing the ozone layer. Now, for those of you that are on the younger side, you may not remember this. In the 80s and the early 90s, this, this, this was the climate change thing that we were dealing with was, was aerosols destroying the ozone layer, which kept out global warming. And it is accurate to a T, because if you go look at school photographs from the 80s, holy shit, men and women, but really, if people with longer hair... We had to be using a can of hairspray a day. That hair is going like a foot over above their head and just everywhere. It's crazy. It's utterly crazy. Uh, and then, of course, in the early 90s, what happened was everyone said, wait a minute. We got to stop using these aerosols. And I was I lived through this. Uh, you know, I've never I didn't have long hair in the 80s. Uh, so I was not using a lot of hairspray. I was probably using this, the occasional gel. I was a kid. Uh, but that I do vividly remember in the nineties when it was like, you cannot bring aerosol cans here and here and here. And I remember going to like a camp and they're like, you can't, no aerosols whatsoever, no hairspray, no. And it's like, Oh, oh, okay. And, uh, of course that being said, there is some hairspray in, in our large bathroom. I believe my wife uses it on occasion. I rarely use it, but if I'm getting the Mohawk up, it does require a little bit, just a little bit of hairspray. Not like they were doing in the eighties, man. It's, and again, it was men and women, but if you had like an older sister or something and you went walking into her room in the morning or like, you know, in the evening when she's getting ready to go out, oh, you're walking into just a room full of ha- hairspray. <laughs> it's utterly nuts. Uh, so check that one out. That's a funny hashtag. Don't go read some of the other ones that I was telling you about, but definitely check that one out. You get a good laugh out of it. I did. 
for sure. All right, mental health. This is something we've broached before, but uh, I want to give a little reminder on it. Here's the other thing, too, is we've been talking mental health and mental illness uh, for, Jesus, seven, almost, seven, it is just about seven years. It's going to be, we are coming up on the seventh anniversary of uh, Go Tell It to the Wall. Uh, so sometimes it's tough to put together content because uh, while I have dealt with it the majority of my life, seven years of content for mental health, uh, it, 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 sometimes it's tough to pull that. So we do repeat some stuff, but I, what I do want to repeat, because we often need a reminder, and I know people are out there struggling uh, with the amount of active shooters and mass shootings we've had right now, uh, not to mention school shootings. Uh, this is, it's so common in the United States, and it's, it's, it's I don't even, I, I always say, it's unfortunate. It's not unfortunate. We got to fucking do something. Regardless, this can take a serious toll on your mental health. Um, and it feels like it increases, you know, and, and maybe for maybe during the summer because kids aren't in school, there's not as much. But I, f I f it feel like it feels as though it's on an upswing right now, uh, which is incredibly frustrating. Uh, and especially if you are a parent of a child who you send to school, my child goes to school. I worry every goddamn day that something bad is going to happen at her school. And this is something that we have to deal with in the United States, simply because politicians are in the pocket of the National Rifle Association. And then it's the blame game. Okay, we just had one today. I guarantee it's going to happen. They're going to come out and especially people on a certain side of the aisle are going to start blaming mental illness. This is your reminder. We have talked about it again. If you look at the statistics, it is a small, small minority of mass shooters and active shooters that are actually suffering from a mental illness. So do not let that certain side of the aisle gaslight you on this because it is absolutely false. The statistics prove it wrong. Fact check. That is a, that is a core tenet of what we do here at Go Tell It to the Wall, and that's fact checking, and that is a fact. I am not an expert. However, I've looked at the numbers, and the fact is it's more often than not, it is not mental illness. More often than not, it is not video games. It is not these kinds of things that they like to blame it on. It's hatred. And that's why it can take such a toll on our mental health. And you need to learn to have that balance of being informed and just turning it off. Trust me, if you, if you watch the news here in the United States, you're, prob you're going to see violence on a daily basis. So it's finding that balance of being informed, but also taking care of your mental health. Turn off the news when needed and take a break. That's what you need. I mean, geez, even if we didn't have mass shootings every day, there's, there'd be something on the news that will, you can't, nobody should sit there and watch the news all day. It's not healthy. It's just not good. And especially if you deal with a mental illness. For example, I suffer from obsessive compulsive disorder. I see these things and some people are able to watch the news, see something like that, see that violence, and then it affects them for a little while, but then they move along. Somebody with obsessive compulsive disorder or obsessive anxiety disorder like myself is going to let them that mentally and physically affect them, not let it, but it will mentally and physically affect them for much longer than an average person who doesn't deal with those kinds of disorders. So that's why you need to learn to listen to your body and your mind. And if you need to unplug from those things, you unplug from those things. Because more often than not, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing I could have done to, to help prevent this active shooter in North Carolina today. It's good to know about it. It's good to honor victims, but not at the expense of your own mental health, especially if you deal with what can be a debilitating mental illness at times. Uh, and another thing I want to mention, just gird your loins because it is happening. We're going to talk about it a little more when we get into common sense. It is going to be a long fucking year. We are in an election year means lies after lie after lie after lie and gaslighting after gaslighting after gaslighting. Again, take a break from it. And the most important thing over the upcoming year, not just in general, but also especially for your mental health is to make sure you are fact checking these rich assholes that sit in a building in Washington and make decisions based on their own needs and the needs of of, of corporations instead of the needs of their constituents who are they, they are supposed to be serving. 
Don't be afraid to call them out, but don't let it affect your life knowing that you can only do so much. Yes, get out and vote. Do those things, but don't read everything the stupid Orange Menace is tweeting. None of it's true. We're at the point where not a goddamn thing he says is true, and that can absolutely take a toll on your mental health. All right, let's move along with some positive news. The voice seems to be holding up. It's really funny. that John's going to listen to this, my good buddy John. I have multiple good buddies, John, but he knows which one I'm talking about. And I said to him on Saturday, because that was night two of seeing Less Than Jake, I said, I'm going to try to conserve my voice tonight. And we're standing on the patio, and then we walk in, and Venomous Pinks go on, and, well, guess I'm not conserving my voice tonight. (laughs) So, oh, man. All right, positive news. Uh, This one's for me personally, and uh, I guess it is positive news for for those of you out there that are avid listeners and avid supporters is I realize we've been kind of all over the place uh, for a few months here, scheduling conflicts and everything else. And as I mentioned back in like May, uh, I'm a masochist and I decided to pick up another part time gig uh, and and it was kind of threw a wrench in everything and not necessarily in a bad way. Uh, But after a couple months of now adding that uh, along with some other stuff, I'm finally getting back in a groove Um, and it's it's a little less hectic. And I think this happens for anybody uh, when you start something new, when you move into a new house, whatever it might be. And it takes a while to kind of get that routine in that groove. And I finally kind of hit that point. Uh, So we're going to see more consistent episodes for those of you that are fans of uh, the photography that, that gets posted on Instagram and on Facebook. Uh, I've actually gotten more, I'm not caught up yet, for, not by any means, but I'm getting more and more caught up on the photography. Uh, and it was just a matter of getting used to juggling another thing. You know, I can't, I can't juggle myself, but, uh, you know, you see a juggler and they're juggling like three things and then someone throws them another thing and they kind of got to readjust to that. And, uh, that's, what's been going on for me. But luckily on a positive, selfishly on a positive news standpoint, uh, things are are starting to get back into a groove. Uh, the studio is, is chugging along well. I'm getting more use out of my studio, which has actually been nice for the first time since 2020. Uh, so look forward to uh, more consistent content. That's why, like I said, we got video clips up last week. We got photos up last week. Uh, and more of that is coming this week as well. Uh, so and, and for me, to all of you wall fans out there, I appreciate your patience as, as it has been inconsistent. And there's always going to be scheduling conflicts, uh, but we are definitely in a much better place than we were a couple months ago. Again, not that it was a bad place. Uh, it was just an adjustment because, honestly, I take on too many things at times, and, uh, and, and I just there's just not enough hours in the day. It's pretty, pretty much simple as that. All right, parenting. Excuse me, i got to get some, some water from my Gotel to the Wall mug. And just a reminder, if you want your own Gotel to the Wall mug, you can pick one up through the merch store. It's not going to be this one. This is a custom, one-of-a-kind Gotel to the Wall mug. I mean, you probably could find your own mug that's exactly like this, but this was a one-off that I had had made by uh, Simeon over there at Stupid Rat Merch Company. Got to try to conserve the voice. I swear, next episode is going to be back because <laughs> luckily I don't have... Less than Jake coming to town, uh, you know. Well, they got half past two on Friday, so we'll see how that goes. All right, parenting. Uh, LASD, LA, blah, blah, blah. LAUSD, that's Los Angeles Unified School District, uh, actually made the choice to close schools last Monday uh, so my kid didn't have school, uh, which totally made sense. There was actually some backlash, weirdly, from parents online. My wife is in you know, like Facebook groups and stuff with parents and moms and all this stuff. And I'm in like a parent group, but it's like punk rock dads and stuff like that. So there's not a lot of complaining about uh, school closures and weather. But it made sense because, granted, the weather did stop like Sunday night. It was pouring rain all Sunday. My kid was stir crazy. It was absolutely nuts. Uh, But it was precaution after the storm because it was going through the night and there is no way schools could guarantee there wouldn't be a fucking tree in the middle of the schoolyard. Yet parents complain, oh, what are we supposed to do? It's, it's like, you know what? Adapt. School district's trying to keep your kids safe. Wouldn't you rather them be trying to keep your kids safe than putting them in danger? Simple as that. Uh, so no school last Monday. Uh, utterly crazy. And then we get to this coming weekend, which I swear, I, I, I think this happened last year too. And I don't know why we do it. 
Uh, this coming weekend is Labor Day weekend. Uh, but they also, at uh, I don't know if it's just my kid's school or if it's the entire school district, they also have Friday off. So they have a four-day weekend. And I'm all for a four-day weekend, you know, for the kids, let them have it. They just started school, like, in the past couple weeks. I don't think we have a need for a four-day weekend uh, when they've just been in school for a couple weeks. Like, you're trying to... It, for those of you that have kids, you know how this... We, there is such an adjustment when kids go back to school. Emotionally, physically, socially, all sides of it. So they go to school for two weeks, and then they have four full days off. And to me, it's like, okay, this is not the time. You want to do a four-day weekend when they've been in school for a couple months? Sure. I don't know why we do it Labor Day weekend after they've only been in school for uh, for a couple weeks. And on that note, and I have this conversation every single year with other parents, and they're, school starts like mid-August, and it's like, I swear we never started this early. And I was like, no, I, you're starting like September. In fact, when I was growing up, uh, the public schools in San Diego, they went back to school after Labor Day. Uh, my school... A lot of the private schools, they went back like the week before. But even then, it was the end of August, not middle of August. And uh, apparently that's just a thing we do now. All right, some good news on the parenting standpoint. Uh, Bluey, we all love Bluey. Oh, man. I swear, I, I will watch Bluey by myself. I, my kid's not around, and I see it popping up. I'm like, ah, I'm just going to sit and watch this for a few. And we've talked about Bluey many times on this uh, on this podcast, especially when it pertains to parenting. Uh, but the good news is there is a new game called Bluey Let's Play, uh, and it is for kids. It is specifically geared towards kids 12 and under, uh, and it uh, is actually. And I don't know the process on this. Please forgive me. I didn't do that much research into it. But when you go on app stores like Apple and Google, uh, you know it'll have kid approved or whatever, and they actually have a thing that says teacher approved uh, for certain apps. And Bluey Let's Play is actually a teacher approved uh, app. So I guess. Maybe they have a panel of teachers who, who say, hey, it, it always it's like those de- the toothpaste commercials, like four out of five dentists recommend, and this is like four out of five teachers recommend Bluey. Let's I don't know, uh, but apparently it is teacher approved, uh, so it might be a decent uh, app or game to let your kid play, especially if they are a fan of Bluey. And how could you not be a fan of Bluey? For Pete's sake, it's like the greatest kid show ever created. I'll say second greatest, but that's only because I. I am a rather large Muppet fan, uh, so so I will give it next below Muppets, but uh, that's just because I'm biased. You look around here, there's Muppet shit everywhere. Oh, I forgot there's like a Ninja Turtle up there. I haven't been to the theater in years, and I don't know if I mentioned this last episode, but I might actually uh, break down and go out and see the new uh, new Ninja Turtles animated movie. All right, moving along, took a little trip, and this is a recommendation for anybody that's in the Southern California area. Uh, yesterday, we took a trip to uh, Bob Baker Marionette Theater right here in Highland Park. Uh, it is a theater that is, oh gosh, it is, I want to say 60 years old. I'm mean, Not this particular building. They moved to Highland Park a few years ago, but they, the Bob Baker Marionette Theater itself has been around I, I want to say 60 but I think I believe it's more than that it's like 100 something crazy uh they put on these fantastic shows they are fun for kids and adults alike it's all marionettes obviously uh very funny very creative uh, it's cool to see these, these puppets kind of come to life and, and how they uh create them and, and make them move and everything else and uh so if you're in the southern southern uh, L, it, may, it might be it's a bit of a trip if you're in like San Diego but if you're in the LA area uh, highly recommend taking your kids there, or even if you don't have kids and you, you you think you know puppets are cool, marionettes are cool, something for you to enjoy. Um, and uh, and yesterday it was particularly nice because it was very warm out. The heat wave kind of started cranking up yesterday, and so it was like, oh yeah, let's go sit in someone else's air conditioning for an hour and check out this show. Uh, right now they're they they are playing, uh, they're doing a show called Hello Los Angeles. It's actually based on original material that Bob Baker came up with years and years and years ago. Uh, and then they will be moving on to their their Halloween show, uh, I, I believe, like mid September. Uh, so make sure you check them out. In fact, my wife and I finally, finally just broke down and and became members because you can they are a five hundred one three C. You can become members. Uh, so we actually finally did that. My kid loves it. All right. And on a serious note, uh, there is another one of these prank things going around. I just learned about this. Uh, apparently, parents. Are, are okay so so apparently what they're doing and I haven't seen any of the videos but I read an article about it uh, is they will 
pretend they're making a video cooking with their their young child. We're talking children as young as like one. And, you know, maybe they're baking a cake or whatever. And, and then when they go to crack the egg, you know, you usually crack the egg on the side of a bowl, put it in there, mix up all the stuff. I'm not much of a cook, but even I know you crack it on the bowl, you put it in there. I know how to fry an egg. And uh, but apparently what parents are doing is they're instead of cracking it on the bowl, they are cracking it on their children's heads. Yes, this is a prank and a trend that's happening right now. And I don't I don't want to know any parent on Earth that thinks this is an OK thing to do. And in fact, we even have experts that came out and said this can not only is it ridiculous but it can be mentally detrimental to children uh, who don't specifically children who don't understand what is happening Uh, now myself in particular didn't need to be told by experts that this is a bad idea Uh, you're, you're essentially abusing your kid you're wasting food and and you're recording it this is why I often say, wh- who comes up with these things and what kind of parents out there think this is an okay thing to do? I wouldn't even think of this as a funny thing. Don't play any pranks on your kids, for God's sake. Just uh, treat children the way they should be treated. Knock off the stupid pranks. Like, literally, an article, they're like, oh, yes, experts have said, and then it like, listed a whole bunch of reasons why you shouldn't do this. And it's like, I didn't need those reasons, but that just makes it even crazier that we have to put out these... These, uh, these developmental reasons to not crack a raw egg on your child's head. Who, like, honestly. Uh, I don't know. All right, let's get into some common sense here. We're probably going to wrap up early because my voice is, it's coming back, but it's not fully there. <coughs> See, it's just not fully there. Some more water out of my Gotel to the wall mug. Should have put, like, bourbon in here. That probably would have helped the voice a little bit. Ah, there we go. All right, common sense. Apologies for that. Let's see if I'll have to edit out that cough. I swear, the voice will come back eventually. It was coming back quite well. And then I saw Buck 09 last week, and I saw Less Than Jake twice this weekend. And up, up, there goes the voice. Could not talk at all Friday night. Like, I could barely talk. I'm trying to order food at Jack in the Box after the show, and holy shit. I don't I, I don't think they understood me at all. So I got food, but I I don't know, I don't even remember if I got exactly what I think I did get close to what I ordered, but I'm sure they were like, Whoa, can you speak up, sir? And I'm like, No, I can't. This is the best I can do. I'm sorry. All right, like I said, common sense. Uh see we we get tangented here. Uh the Los Angeles media coverage of the tropical storm was quite comical. I'll be honest, on Sunday uh, you know, I wanted to keep up with it and see it as the cell was rolling through. And if you live in an area that gets weather like tornadoes and hurt, you, you do that. I did live in Florida for a, a brief time. Um, and I spent a lot of time in Chicago. So I, I've seen tornado watches and hurricane warnings and been through hurricanes. None, no, no crazy like roofs flying off type stuff. But that's what you do is you watch the news. And so we're watching the news and, uh, my kid's playing cause he can't go outside. It's, freaking windy and pouring rain and everything else and uh they so badly like multiple news outlets so badly wanted people to panic they're going live from like shopping centers and one in particular was at a walmart and they were like yeah we're waiting to see if uh if we get some panic buying and and all this other stuff and they try to catch people walking out of the store and be like oh are you concerned and every single person was like no you know i put put stuff away we made sure gutters are cleared and uh you know we're getting some rain one dude was coming out had just bought a tv like not just not nothing to do with her i mean unless he was like i have no tv and i'm gonna be stuck inside nothing to do with the hurt the tropical storm and the, the all of these newscasters were so disappointed because they just wanted the hysteria to get moving at, at a high level and people were just not having it and in fact, out in Palm Springs, it did get serious. I don't think anybody was was uh, was hurt necessarily, but they had to close down a lot of streets because the flooding got crazy out there. But even uh, in Palm Springs, they I was watching a news segment, and uh, and they, they go over to this restaurant. And people are sitting outside, and it's raining, you know, but it's it's not crazy. They're sitting outside this covered patio area, and they go to this this couple that's sitting there, and uh, like, oh, I you know, are you worried? And they're like, no, we're good. And they're like, well, what are you going to do the rest of the afternoon? They literally said, well, happy hour starts soon. And so they were just going to sit uh, at this cafe or bar or whatever it was and drink. Again, uh, making the media uh, a little upset that they couldn't get hysteria out of people that they were interviewing and talking to. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. It's good to be cautious. 
but it's it's also good to not do the panic and the panic buying and everything else. And I'm sure some of that was going on somewhere. Uh, but uh, the media just was not getting what they expected. So common sense says, uh, you know, follow what's going on. Be informed on the weather. But don't go crazy and set your house on fire or something because you don't know what's going. You know, you're so panicked. I, I don't know. I don't know why you'd set your house on fire. I mean, the rain would put it out anyway. I don't know. But just don't do those things. All right, uh, the, the GOP had a debate last week. Uh, I obviously did not watch this. I have zero interest in watching anything that the Republicans do. It's just not, I, I don't have the, the uh, I, I'm not, I'm not going to give any of my brain space to that, I guess is the best way to put it. But you, of course, get highlights. Uh, now, one of them in particular, and this is the one I'll share with you in Common Sense that, that had me real fired up was, and I can't even remember which, uh, I, I think it was the female uh, GOP uh, nominee candidate, what a Nikki. I, I think it was her. Nobody quote me on that. But one of the people on the debate uh, stage had said, and I quote, we need to break the backs of the teachers unions and and bring back that was it was break the backs of the teachers unions and get kid like take control of it, whatever it was. But that exact quote, break the backs of the teachers unions uh, was absolutely said on stage at the GOP debate. Uh, and then, of course, it was met with raucous applause from the crowd who thinks we need to break the backs of the teachers unions in this country. Uh, if you it, it, it blew it blew my mind that that would even be said. But the fact that the entire crowd uh, applauded it, cheered it on. Uh, and of course, if you've really listened for any amount of time here at Go Tell It to the Wall, uh, we are huge union supporters. Uh, we, we unions are what make this make this country run and function and the teachers unions are absolutely vital to the education of our children so there's no reason for that to be cheered and instead of breaking the backs i quote breaking the backs of the teachers unions try working with teachers to improve our education system here in the united states but that's not what the gop wants to do they just want to impose their hatred and their backwards thinking ways upon the education system here in the United States. Look at what's happening in Florida. I don't want any Republican having anything to do with any education of my child. You have, you have proven by being in that party that you absolutely do not care about children or the education of children. All they care about is their own agenda and pushing things that are blatantly not true most of the time. So that's what's going, o going on on that side of the aisle. Uh, and then, of course, we have the Orange Menace uh, who continues. And I just saw another one today. That's the thing. You don't even have to be on that truth social shit. People screenshot it and they share it on Twitter. He's just constantly threatening. And the judge uh, down there in Georgia specifically said that he cannot intimidate witnesses or lawyers or anything else. And on a daily basis, he's coming out and, and posting things, threatening others and gaslighting everybody. It's just like the whole never surrender. Well, you surrendered, dude. So I don't understand, again, is there nobody in his inner circle? Nobody's giving him any kind of advice? Because even a, most deranged maniacs might be like, maybe this isn't a good idea. That judge said we shouldn't do this. But no, he's just unhinged rants constantly. And yet people still think he should be president of the United States. It, it's like, I just, I don't know what the hell he's thinking. I really don't. It's, it's just dumbfounding. And people are going to vote for that son of a bitch. I, I don't get it. Anyway, speaking of other things I don't get, here's, one, here's another thing I'm not an expert in, but uh, some simple research will show you the inaccuracy of a certain tweet that went out from the National Rifle Association, which is a de facto domestic terrorist organization here in the United States of America. Uh, they, they put out a tweet saying, and I quote, most Americans want to have AR-15s to defend their family. Well, there have been polls and research and all kinds of other things on this. And you can find it easily. Just do a little Google there. The majority of Americans actually do not think anyone needs an AR-15. They do not. This is simple math and simple numbers, simple research. But here we have another example of, of a, a terrible organization run by terrible people. It's a domestic terrorist organization putting out misinformation and gaslighting people. 
And then, of course, you have plenty of people out there that believe this. And they go, yeah, everybody needs an AR-15. Get the fuck out of here with that. No reason for it. Nobody needs an AR-15. You don't. You want to have a shotgun, handgun, defend your family, defend your home? That's fine. You live on a ranch. You need a rifle to, to defend your, your, your livestock. That's fine. You don't need an AR-15. Nobody hunts with an AR-15. If you're hunting with an AR-15, you got a fucking problem. Putting hundreds of bullets in a deer or something. I don't even know. And I'm not an expert on guns by any means. So you can come and tell me, oh, blah, 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 blah. I don't care. What I am an expert is in, and I'm not even an expert in, but it's easy to deal in facts. And facts say that most Americans do not believe anybody needs an AR-15. Do not believe that anybody needs these larger guns and believe firmly that this country, again, the majority of citizens in this country believe firmly that we need better gun control laws. Yet we let organizations and people like the NRA go out and spread misinformation to cheers, cheers from people on a certain side of the aisle. And then politicians with their hands in their pockets not doing anything because they had their hands out to the National Rifle Association getting paid to fight any kind of gun control legislation in this country. It's got to end. And it's never going to end until we stop letting the National Rifle Association buy politicians. That's how it ends. But I fear I'm never going to see it in my lifetime. Maybe the next generation can dismantle this ridiculousness. We can only hope. And we can only continue speaking out and fighting for the rights of the majority of people in this country, not the minority that believes they need these weapons of death. It's what They were designed to kill people. They weren't designed for you to defend your home. All right, let's move along to entertainment news. We're going to wrap up a little bit a little bit early today just because uh, my, my, my mug is almost empty here. I'm just trying to preserve this voice. All right, entertainment news. Uh, Burning Man begins today. It is officially open today. For those of you familiar with it or not familiar with it, yes, people have been on the playa, some people for like a month, setting up the infrastructure. Uh, and then last week, people with theme camps were arriving early to set up their, their theme camps as well as people arriving early to set up art installations. But the official open of Burning Man uh, is today. They will shoot off fireworks tonight and have people spinning fire out on the playa. Uh, and, and officially welcome all of the burners uh, to Black Rock City. Uh, the crazy thing this year, and, and I was talking to my, my wife about it uh, last night, in fact, and, uh, and it's, it, it's almost turned into a joke. Uh, you know, I'm in these Burning Man groups on Facebook and stuff, and every year you have a few people looking for tickets, you have a few people selling tickets. I always used to tell people that, that missed out, you know, when I was going regularly, that missed out on the, on the initial sale, like, don't worry, you, it's fairly easy to find tickets uh, and in the burning man community you do it through like a a, a part a like portal on their website so it's not like a price gouging thing. granted i'm sure some people do try to price gouge but we're not talking about like concerts and sporting events here uh where you go to a real resale site and you're like well that's five times what the uh, original ticket price was but this year there has been an obscene amount of people uh looking to sell their tickets and in fact i started seeing over the past couple days People selling their like trying to sell Burning Man tickets for well under uh, what they paid for them. Uh, I saw some for like two hundred bucks under what they actually paid for the ticket. Uh, so I think, unfortunately, for a lot of people, uh, they're going to be stuck with tickets this year and not actually go to the uh, to 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 the burn itself. Um, and and like I said, I was talking to my wife about this, and I said, "What? How? how why do you think there are so many tickets out there?" And and one th which did make sense. She said, "Maybe it's the the." Uh, the strikes in Hollywood, the, the writer's strike and the actor's guild strike um, that is preventing people from going because you do have a lot of people that are in the creative industry here in Southern California that do go uh, to Burning Man. Um, so that could be part of it. But it is it's the most uh, in my my 10 years of, of being a burner. This is the most I've ever seen in excess of tickets. Uh, and I'll be curious if it's also less crowded like out on the playa this year, which could be interesting. Uh, and for those of you out there, for those of you heading out there, uh, make sure you, you are safe over the week. Uh, have a good burn. Uh, make sure you take advantage of your time out there. Spend it well. Uh, make sure you go to the temple. 
and uh, and and just be safe in general. Uh, and of course, like they say, be safe, but safety third. All right, moving along here, we're gonna do a couple of show recaps. That's right. Uh, Chase Long Beach and Buck 09. Actually, I'm gonna make a note here because I forgot about that. Chase Long Beach and Buck 09 had the privilege of seeing them. Uh, last Saturday at the Glass House, it was actually a Mad Caddies concert. I enjoy the Mad Caddies. I'm not a big fan. I left during the set. I was mainly there for Chase Long Beach, uh, who are close friends, also a fantastic ska band uh, out of Orange County. And then, of course, Buck 09, who I've literally been listening to for almost 30 years. Uh, it's, it's one of my absolute favorite bands. If Anyone that's from San Diego usually has uh, and is into that type of music usually has a soft spot for Buck 09. In fact, uh, for those of you not on the video feed, uh, I am wearing my, my newest Buck 09 shirt that I picked up uh, at that Glass House show. Uh, I'm, I'm always keen to get a new Buck 09 shirt, but this particular one uh, has an anchor on it, and I, I have a, a soft spot for anchors. It is a bit of a symbol uh, when it comes to mental health and mental illness. Uh, so, I'm, so I'm rocking that shirt uh, today for the episode. Um, and last week actually got the photos up uh, from the On the Upbeat Ska episode that we talked about a few episodes ago uh, when I had the privilege of, of seeing a very intimate private show uh, recording of On the Up, Upbeat podcast, uh, which I think, oh yeah, and we, I finally put the sticker up, but it is actually not on the video. The, the sticker wall is getting really full, and not all of it shows on the video, but the, I promise you there is a On the Upbeat Ska sticker just out of frame on the video there. Uh, so we got those photos up last week. If you haven't seen them yet, uh, check them out um, at SoCalShawn on Instagram. Uh, it was a fantastic show. Uh, I wrote House of Blues here, even though it wasn't House of Blues, it was the Glass House. A uh, fantastic show at the Glass House. Had lots of friends out there. Actually uh, met up with some friends right before the show. Had a, if, if, you, if you've been to Glass House and you haven't been to the Rookery, I uh, highly recommend going to the Rookery before you go into the Glass House. Uh, I love the Glass House, not the best beer selection. You can get yourself a much tastier beer at the Rookery right across the street, and then you head in a Glass House, so that tends to be what I do uh, What I do when I'm out there for a show. Uh, Chase Long Beach killed it, as usual. Um, and I think, you know, ever since their comeback, uh, they are getting more and more comfortable uh, playing their songs on stage and everything else, and Karen is an, is ap- is an absolute fantastic uh, lead singer for them. Uh, so it was it was a lot of fun seeing them. I, I think I took some photos of my phone, but I've been so behind. I've been turning down photo gigs uh, until I can catch up on all my previous um, previous sets of photos that got that I've got to get out. And Buck Nine, of course, always great. Uh, I like, and I I swear they they I I've met them various times over the years, but now I think I'm known as the guy that. Uh, that says let's get Irish until until they play the Irish drinking song, which if you haven't heard it, make sure you check that one out. Even if you're not a big ska fan, it's just a very fun song. Uh, and obviously, missing Tony, uh, who is their trumpet player, who stepped away from the band uh, to deal with his other businesses, um, and he actually played his last show with them uh, on Saturday in San Diego, uh, and now he's officially stepped away. But uh, I have a feeling, and I talked to Pebs, John Pebsworth. Uh, he's probably going to step back in now and then because they, in fact, uh, I going into the show, I was like, oh, I wonder what, what they're going to do with trumpet. And uh, and sure enough, when they came out, no trumpet player. They just didn't replace Tony or anything. So I have a feeling he'll be popping back up here and there. He even said to me when I spoke to him uh, at his last L.A. show uh, that that he's like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just I just not going to be up on stage all the time and everything else. So uh, and of course, we miss, it's one of the best dudes you'll ever meet. Uh, so we wish him the best of luck either way. But I have a feeling uh, we'll see him here and there popping up with a trumpet uh, with Buck 09 at certain shows. Uh, and then, of course, Less Than Jake made their triumphant return to Los Angeles uh, since about a year ago. But this is what happens when Less Than Jake comes to uh, Southern California. I tend to get a Los Angeles ticket as well as an Orange County ticket. Uh, so I had the privilege of seeing them. On Friday at the Echoplex, which weird, I, I hadn't been to the Echoplex in years, years and years and years. It was still still seemed the same, but kind of some some upgraded things there. And uh, uh, Venomous Pinks kicked it off. They are as always fantastic. Uh, I swear they get better and better every time I see them. Uh, they're some of the best uh, musicians you're ever going to meet. If if you're not listening to the uh, Venomous Pinks, especially their most recent album, so it's just all great tracks. 
uh, you are definitely missing out. Uh, so they killed it. Uh, and interestingly, I, I was talking to multiple people before the show started, and it was like, oh, do you know who's Open Venomous Pinks? And I was talking them up, and sure enough, uh, after the Pinks played, I had multiple of those people come up to me and be like, oh my God, you're right, they're fantastic. Uh, so so good for them. They I know they picked up some new fans, uh, and the, these were both sold-out shows on Friday and Saturday. Uh, and then Toasters played. I've seen Toasters a bunch of times. I was kind of half paying attention. Then Lesson Jake comes on, and I'm kind of watching from the back uh, with a couple friends that I had run into at the show. Uh, and then there was this guy that was not sloppy drunk, but he was at, he was having a good time. And I had been talking to him out on the patio for a few minutes, just shooting the shit. And uh, he sees me kind of standing in the back. He's like, come on, because the circle pit had started. And I was like, all right, let's go. So I follow him in, and I'm in the circle pit going around, and somehow I ended up like one or two people back from the front of the stage there uh, and just uh, just sweaty mess getting kicked in the head by crowd surfers. And uh, I even said to my wife later that night, one of the best shows I've been to in a very, very, very long time. Uh, they Less Than Jake played the entirety of Hello Rockview, which happens to be my favorite Less Than Jake album. Uh, and they absolutely killed it. Uh, and there was definitely a moment where the lead singer, Chris, was, was saying my name from the stage because he told a lie, which he tends to do on stage. Said he had recently moved to Dublin and asked if anyone in the crowd was Irish. And everyone in the crowd was kind of quiet. So I said, well, I, I am Irish. Told him my name. He said that's the most Irish name he's ever heard in his life. Then proceeded to spit out one of the worst Irish accents I've ever heard in my life. Sounded like someone doing a poor impression of the Lucky Charms leprechaun. Uh, so then I turned my back and uh, everyone laughed. So it was a good time there. Uh, and then Saturday was night two. Much more, many more friends that I knew, which tends to be the case. Because uh, a lot of the, my friends that I, I go to shows with are in Orange County. And this was in Santa Ana at the observatory. Again, sold out. The Pinks absolutely killed it. It was another night where uh, you and you and on Saturday you could actually see the Pinks start, and people didn't really weren't really familiar with the Pinks. They're mainly there for less than Jake and Venom's Pinks are not ska; that they are punk, and uh, you could see the energy increase like as they played because people are like, "Oh, who's this? Oh, that's cool. Oh, oh, oh!" And then just the energy increase, and so I think they picked up some new fans on Saturday as well. Uh, and then less than Jake somehow, I was in the back. Finished my beer. I probably should have handed it to somebody because at my age, it was a hold my beer moment. Made my way down to the circle pit and uh, got into another sweaty mess there. Just enjoying uh, the greatness is, that is less than Jake because, of course, they are a top three band of mine. And, uh, and I've been a fan of them for almost 30 years as well, much like Buck 09. Uh, and it was more subdued vibe on Friday compared to Saturday. Uh, but interestingly enough, the, like the energy was was a little higher on Saturday, but there was more crowd surfing on Friday because I was lifting a lot of people on Friday. On Saturday, there was only a couple people flying over my head. All right. Highly recommend uh, Less Than Jake and Venomous Pinks. We got You can see the Venomous Pinks sticker on the wall. That's been there for a long time. All right. We're going to wrap it up here in a moment, but I will say, uh, and I don't believe this one is sold out. My next show, I will be in North Hollywood on Friday at the Knitting Factory. I don't know if they're still calling it the New Knitting Factory. <laughs> like, for a while, it was... And I was saying this over the weekend, and I ran into people that were like, oh, yeah, I'm going to that show. And and, and this other couple that I just met on Friday, uh, husband and wife, and they were like, what? Oh, and oh, because I had half past two patch. And I was like, oh, you're going Friday? They are like, well, what's Friday? Literally, the wife bought their tickets on her phone as we're standing there, <laughs> like, talking. Um, but I kept saying New Knitting Factory. And it's like, New Knit... I think we've moved on to Knitting Factory now because it's been a while, uh, but I will be out there for the uh, to see Half Past Two, uh, as well as We Are the Union. We Are the Union is headlining, as well as Bad Operation, uh, who I've never seen live. And interestingly enough, uh, we have been told that Brittany from Catbite is going to be singing for Bad Operation that particular night. Uh, and this is one of those ones. My wife doesn't go to a ton of shows, but she loves Half Past Two, really wants to see We Are the Union, and uh, she loves Catbite. So I was like, well, you're not seeing Catbite, but you are going to see the lead singer of Catbite. So it's kind of cool. Uh, so if you don't have plans for Friday night, I believe it is not sold out yet. Get on those tickets. Uh, I will be out there at the Knitting Factory in North Hollywood. And if you see me running around there and haven't gotten a sticker yet, hit me up. I will throw some stickers your way. I have an excess of stickers right now. I was running so low on them leading up to Punk Rock Bowling, and luckily I was able to get some printed before Punk Rock Bowling. And then I swear, like June... They were just like, we're going to put your stickers on sale 
each type of your sticker on sale for like a week straight. So I was just like, well, some new die cuts, some new uh, uh, hologram stickers, some new circle stickers. So I'm flush with stickers. Uh, so make sure you're picking up a sticker if you haven't got Even if you just need more stickers, I'll have them with me on Friday uh, at the Knitting Factory there in North Hollywood. All right, that's going to do it for us. Uh, before we go, don't forget to follow us on the socials. Uh, Facebook.com slash go tell it to the wall. YouTube.com slash go tell it to the wall or at go tell it to the wall. My own personal Instagram account. I said there's new photo sets going up this week uh, at SoCalShawn, S-O-C-A-L-S-E-A-N, at SoCalShawn. And make sure you bookmark SeanOrWorkLive.com uh, where you can find all of that information that I just rattled off as well as links to our Patreon and our merch website if you want to support us financially. All right. Uh, we should be, I know, I gotta stop saying it, but we're in a groove now. We will be back next weekend. Uh, same wall place, same wall time. Uh, this has been episode 113 of Common Sense Sundays with Go Tell Us the Wall, hosted by me, your absolute favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. And until next time, wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers, remember, no matter what you do, no matter who you're with, no matter where you go, and especially no matter why you are doing it, always, always use... Common sense.